Hello again from the Division of uh, Cardiac Surgery here at the Mass General Hospital. Uh, we hope that you've enjoyed these brief uh, introductions to members of our division and uh, our activities. Uh, uh, we've uh, uh, particularly today uh, with the uh, recent report of the pig to human heart transplant in Maryland, uh, we wanted to introduce you to Dr. Robin Pearson, who has an active lab in xenotransplantation uh, here at uh, MGH. Uh, Robin's really made this his career, uh, scientific career. Um, uh, Robin was uh, trained here in, at the MGH in cardiac surgery and then was like me, was away for about 20 years before returning. And uh, we're very fortunate to have him a member of the division. And I thought that you might all be interested in hearing from him about his activities in xenotransplantation, both for heart and lung, as well as other activities around, around transplantation. So Robin. Thank you, Tor, for that kind introduction. Uh, MGH is a great place to work, and uh, thank you for making it such a comfortable home for me to do our both our clinical work and our and our research. As you say, I've been working in xenotransplantation for it's now over thirty years, uh, and during that time, we've actually made some real progress, and that's illustrated couldn't be illustrated better than by the exper the clinical experience that has just been reported from Maryland. I spent 16 years at Maryland and, and built the lab that did this foundational work uh, that underpins the clinical translation that's just been accomplished. My research career has been all about trying to expand access to transplants for patients. And this uh, being able now to, we think, safely use a pig heart to save a human's life is truly remarkable. It's uh, exciting and inspiring. The work we're currently doing in the lab is uh, to try to extend this to make it routinely available as opposed to by exception, which is what was currently accomplished in Maryland, uh, and to do the preclinical, solid preclinical work to be certain that when we go to a patient's bedside and propose that we put a new heart in them from a pig, that we can be pretty darn sure it's going to work. So that's what we are up to in the lab, supported in part with the NIH support, uh, also with support from companies. But uh, there's all kinds of things we could do different and better with additional help. Our uh, work in the lung has, we published two, I think, landmark papers this year, one showing that a combination of eight different genetic modifications to the pig gets us a long way toward a clinically usable lung, but not all the way there. And in a separate paper, that one individual modification to a different pathway than others have worked on uh, gets us a, an additional good part of the way there. And our hope is over the next three to five years to be able to combine those two approaches together and really to bring lung xenotransplantation to the bedside. That's terrific. It's important to recognize that from a from a, just a, a, a physiologic functional standpoint, there isn't any reason that we can't use the uh, animal organs. It's, it's the immunology that's the barrier. And you touched on a, a really important point, I think, which was that you've carried this on. Um, it's, funding has been a challenge for um, the, all these many uh, years. You've, you've uh, done a heroic job keeping the lab uh, funded. Xenotransplantation was not something that the NIH was interested in funding for very many years. Uh, so you've uh, relied on relationships with industry. And of course, philanthropy can play a, a, an enormously uh, important role in helping us to advance these kinds of really groundbreaking revolutionary uh, activities. Uh, high risk, high reward activities is not typically what the NIH supports, but we need that funding from, uh, from philanthropic sources to support that. And everybody has been looking at our results in the lung and saying, my God, you've made so little progress with all this uh, work that you've been doing. But the, the, the key is that we have made progress. And uh, that uh, scientific approach to the problems we've, been, we've discovered uh, has really led us to, the, the, we think, the door to a real breakthrough. Well, that's, that's terrific. And before we close, we try to keep these uh, brief. Um, uh, maybe some of the other activities that you've got going on in the, in the, uh, in the laboratory. Yeah, in addition to trying to identify uh, this alternative organ source in the pig organs, we've been working on better ways to control the immune response. We use monoclonal antibodies against specific molecules in the immune system, and that, that seems to be a much safer, less toxic uh, way to, for us to protect the heart or lung or kidney graft that uh, a patient might get today. 
And those treatments are, are just coming out of the lab and into the clinic. And we're very excited about the potential for improvements in, in human health from that work. That's tremendously uh, exciting and important. Uh, uh, it's important to some who are less familiar with transplantation, uh, that many of the drugs that we use to suppress the immune system so that the, the, the host, the, the, the recipient, the patient accepts the, uh, accepts the organ are hard on kidneys. They're, they're fairly toxic drugs, frankly, uh, to maintain this balance uh, for, for patients. And you have to take them every day. So yeah, we'd yeah. like to get away from that. So yeah, yeah, you never forget you've got a transplant. So thanks very much uh, for that. Again, uh, this kind of groundbreaking work really uh, can be accelerated tremendously uh, with uh, philanthropic support. Uh, anyone who's interested in, in uh, supporting uh, this activity or other activities within the division, please uh, contact us. Um, uh, we feel like the, uh, the, the division is really on the cutting edge. It's, uh, it's an exciting time in cardiac surgery uh, and in thoracic surgery around lung transplantation as well. Uh, and we appreciate everyone's interest and support. Thank you. Thank you, George.